so let's talk about the MCNA, the multi-cloud network architecture. Okay, so, you know, this is what we have seen quickly in terms of uh, AWS, uh, Azure, and GCP. Uh, we talked about a lot of services uh, within these clouds, right? And especially in the networking and security space. So if you look at the, the focus of those cloud providers, right? So this, this is what you see in AWS. So you log into the AWS console, you click on the services, and you can see you know, a lot of services there. And uh, there are services in the database, in the media service, mobile, uh, internet of things. And then there is a networking, right? So the, you can see their focus there. Um, it's, it's not a whole lot, right? Uh, and then if you look at AWS TGW, uh, it was announced in November 2018 reInvent timeframe. So you can imagine it is not easy to actually be in the transit business or provide a transit solution, which is enterprise grade or enterprise ready, right? And that's why they are, everybody is actually is lacking in, in that area. Uh, we talked about Azure, uh, various options, then VVAN. Uh, still, there are so many challenges. And then uh, Nicholas was talking about GCP, and there is no transit solution in GCP. So in, in Azure, again, you see uh, there are a lot of services, but, but, uh, but their focus is uh, uh, on uh, you know, various other services like uh, machine learning or AI or blockchain. Yeah, so, so the, what I'm trying to tell you that these cloud providers are building these services they are providing it to you, but obviously they have to cater these thousands and thousands of users, okay? So it's not very easy to provide a feature or a service that your enterprise need. So you need partners like Aviatrix or the, the architecture that we have so that you can actually enable or deploy or use those features that you need. For example, BGP, uh, AS path prepend, very simple thing, right? But no, it's not available in the cloud. So how would you achieve that? So this is where we come in. We provide you the architecture and the solution. And same theme you will see in GCP. In GCP, you see a lot of services there. Um, and then in the networking space, they have uh, the things that you need from you know very primitive perspective, right? So yeah, I will give you these construct, you take it and you deploy it, but that's it. If you want something else, no, sorry, I cannot because I have to support these thousands and thousands of customer. If I make even a single bit change there, it's gonna affect everybody. So I have to be really careful. That's what these cloud providers will tell you. All right, so if we look at uh, uh, these services, um, they have kind of similar concept, but not really similar because the implementation, the limitations, the challenges are very different, right? So like, for example, this uh, private link to DC, uh, AWS calls it Direct Connect, Azure calls it Express Route, GCP Cloud Interconnect, but they all have their own uh, limitations and challenges. So this is what, we have seen, we have seen customers, they are moving from uh, physical on-prem data centers. So, so they thought maybe private cloud is the solution. This is going to solve their problem, but no, uh, this is not the case. Uh, and then uh, they are moving into the cloud, but the problem is that there is no architecture, right? So people started deploying their applications. Developers went in, they put their credit cards in, they said, okay, I'm gonna deploy this application. But in the process, they created these, these snowflakes, these unicorns, like security group was used here in this VPC, but in the second VPC, I'm using the checkpoint firewall, for example. And then how would I uh, expect the traffic between these two, I don't know, right? I'm the developer, I'm not responsible. So there is a big architecture gap. At least in the physical world, we had some reference architecture. For example, Cisco gave this architecture of you know, three-tier data center, the core, the aggregation, the access, right? Uh, but unfortunately, that is missing in the cloud, right? Uh, so who's gonna solve these problems? So what we see, and when, when we talk to customers, uh, we, see, we hear their pain. They, they are coming to us with the, with the pain. They are saying, you know, this is very complex. I thought this is an easy button. That's not the case. Uh, and in, the, in this process, due to this lack of architecture, um, there are chaos, there are science projects, right? And then obviously business is not happy, right? And when you talk about the operations, visibility, that's lacking, right? So this is where Aviatrix is helping customers and the industry, I would say, to who, by providing this reference architecture. Hey guys, this is what you need to follow. This is how this architecture should look like. So you should have a component of core, the cloud core, right? This is where you need to have your application connecting to this global transit layer, 
this is your unified global data plane across multiple cloud or in single cloud, to be honest, right? And then you should have a component of cloud access. This is where your on-prem resources should connect to, to the cloud. They could be legacy branches, legacy data center, or new type of applications, right? Could be SD-WAN, IoT type services. This is how they should connect through this cloud access layer and then come into this, uh, connect to the transit, okay? Um, and then once you follow this common data plane, common architecture, you basically can use this repeatable architecture across different cloud, right? Right. This is black line actually showing this, this common data plane or the global transit or the cloud core, if you want to call it, right? Security, nothing goes without security, period. If you don't have proper security based on whatever definition you have for, from your enterprises, they're not going to approve this architecture. And we talk about security, this is not just about simple firewall, no. It goes way beyond that. Where you're talking about ingress security because now you look at the internet, internet is just sitting next to you, right? In your VPC, in, at least in the on-prem, there was a DMZ, there was a cage, there was a lock and everything. That's not the case here. So you need to provide and look this problem from a different angle, right? You need to provide security from all those, those angles and aspect. There is a security in terms of creating the segmentation, right? We saw VVAN, everything is wide open. How would you create those security boundaries, right? So those type of things are needed for this architecture. And then the last piece uh, in this architecture is the cloud operations. So yeah, I mean, I don't have packet capture. That's the basic thing, at least as a network admin or engineer, that's what I use. I need to see packet if, if things are breaking or, or if I need to troubleshoot, right? they don't have this, or if they have it, this very difficult to actually get those captures. So this is, these are the problems we are solving and the problem of visibility, right? Deep, deep visibility inside your, your cloud networking operations, where my VPCs are. I mean, this customer I have is a giant, um, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the sports business, I don't want to name it because it's not public reference, but they are using our co-pilot just so that they can figure out or see where those VPCs are, how they are connected and how the instances are connected to those VPCs, if they are under, under compliance or not, right? So this is, these are the challenge we are, challenges we are solving for a lot of enterprises. So yeah, so that's what I said. This MCNA architecture, it's a repeatable architecture. Um, you can use our, our AVTX controller. This is the control plane and then these red circles are data plane. Um, yeah, I'm kind of uh, jumping here because uh, Nicholas is going to cover these in detail. Uh, but I think it's important that when I show you this architecture, I kind of paint the picture of how exactly it's going to be deployed using AVTX technology. So this is how it looks like, right? So you deploy this architecture in single cloud. If you have multiple regions, again, same thing, same architecture is applicable in the multiple region, right? So you, this is a cloud access, your SD-WAN coming in. This is your your enterprise backbone connecting these transit together. You have the, the DC direct connect coming in. And if you copy paste <clears throat> or repeat this architecture <clears throat> across multiple cloud, right? It's, it's a one-time effort to build this, this architecture, but then it's a lot easier to just copy paste and reuse this architecture in other cloud. So I have VNets, all the Azure thing here, right? So same thing, right? Same operational visibility, same consistency, GCP, same thing. Repeatable architecture, very important. So these are the benefits um, our customers are getting when they are adopting this MCNA architecture or um, uh, the repeatable architecture, the global unified data plane that we have, right? That's, that's very important. Uh, it's a flexible and modular design. You saw the in the architecture, there is a component of uh, service insertion, service chaining, which is built right into the transit. So if you want to insert a firewall, a checkpoint firewall, for example, and you wanna create the policies, you can actually realize that easily through our controller. So your intent is being configured in the controller and then it's being realized uh, in our gateways through the data plane that we have. Embrace and extend, this is our mantra, because uh, what we believe is that if a cloud provider is providing you a service, right, and that is, perfectly fine, there are, there are no gotchas out there, we'll embrace it. We'll say, okay, yeah, why not? For example, Cloud Guard, uh, Guard right, um, is, is, uh, is a service from uh, AWS. Uh, 
uh, yeah, if you want to use it, yeah, you can use it, but there are some limitations. Okay, we'll extend it. S3, yes, you want to use S3? Yes, we embrace S3, but there are limitations of connecting to S3 buckets uh, in a private and secure way. So we extend it with our solution. Security is embedded at each layer. You saw that, and you will keep seeing it when you hear from Nicholas in the coming slide. Day two operations ready, right? So when you deploy this architecture, uh, the operational component, the framework is there, is built in. You cannot say that, yeah, I need to bolt it on. No, it's there, right? So these are the advantages our customers are getting.